we're back. We've got the Dodge back in. It hasn't gotten any warmer. Matter of fact, it's gotten a whole lot colder. Uh, so I got the uh, compressor out there. That came in from Napa. I haven't even opened the box yet. I hope it's right. It should be. It was the only other option with the chamfered ports. So we'll grab that, see if we can get that baby put on here and get this baby out the door. This one's gonna be okay to use. I don't know why. Feel it though. But before we go full gorilla on this baby, we'll go we'll go baby gorilla. We'll just have a look at these ports. Plug in that looks right this time. That's the compressor does. Right here. Look, remember our last one that we had had those uh, square cut ports on it where they were just you know milled off flat. Ours had like tapered holes of a different size. That this has tapered holes, so it should be good to go. Shipping oil, drain oil. Like the last one came and it had a big old warning on it that had no oil. I remember this one. We need to bring it on prop rack. stating how much I took out. So I don't forget. I have a tendency to do that. Especially if it's been several days. Grab a something to put the oil in here. I always feel like a real geek when I use this. <laughs> Real scientific. So we'll use our graduated cylinder, see if we get any oil out. Zippo. That baby is dry. Let's see if there's any in this one. <clears throat> That it contains some shipping oil. The o ring's stuck here.
and that'll, uh, <clears throat> I'll open up the ports here in the back. We'll see if there's any any hiding out in there. Take that back off. I can let that off, I guess. Make sure we got it completely drained. We'll put it on. And we're gonna have to put some oil in it. Of course, we don't know how much you know system capacity. Well, we can look up system capacity, but we don't know how much we need to put in. There's usually a general rule with get this compressor to turn. Man, she's a little stiff. Usually kind of some general rules with AC compressors, you know, condensers, you know, if you're removing a component, how much oil you put back in. And I'd say this thing's pretty dry, so we only got uh, oh, 15 yeah, milliliters, so like one and a half ounces. Oops. All right, now that we think we have the right compressor, we can cut all our zip ties off. What's up? Here comes Mrs. O interrupting the YouTube video again. What's up? Because you do this every day, all day. No, I know. I work hard every day. Yeah. I don't always get to make YouTube videos and screw off. Well, sometimes. What's up? Did you just come out here to harass us? Mm, or, no, I have to ask you a question. Ooh, like an on-camera question or like an off-camera question? Like an off-camera question. All right, go ahead and hit the button. Wow, this guy, this thing sealed up wonderfully. It's not Wait, I don't know where the button is. It's in the back. It's a little button. The one that says start, stop? Yep. All right, all yeah. right. well, we got all the top secret talk done. The one thing I noticed I'm stuck. Was uh, these hoses? They they still had pressure in them, so that's a good thing. Of course, I, I let the truck warm up so we could get everything heated up on here. So when we put a vacuum on it, it'll be a little more efficient. Um, this had like really really small O-rings on it, but it came with some flat face washers. The O-rings that were on it are all gnarled up and messed up. It's these these little orange ones. Of course, they're completely toast. So I don't know if this originally has two, if it seals two ways, if it has an O-ring and a flat washer. I do not know. I will have to look that up. I'll look up the OEM stuff and see. I guess it wouldn't hurt so long as our O-ring was down in past the taper on the pump, you know what I'm saying? because we wouldn't want to put a flat washer on there too and then find out that it puts our O-ring up in the taper then everything leaks. I don't know, I'll look, I'll see what it came with OEM, see if I can, I've got a pretty good assortment of AC water, AC uh, O-rings. That's the problem when you didn't take it apart, you're not sure, but everything else the guy took off, he left in that box, so I can only assume, sometimes I can get you in trouble, I can only assume that it was just the O-rings, simply because I don't know if I've seen any washers and you left the O-rings right on there and had it taped up, sealed up real nice. Let's get the, get the belt off here. I'll take this AC bypass kit off, give it back to them in case this ever happens again. Sounds like you had some washers underneath that we didn't know about. <clears throat> oh, there we go. That means we'll stick our compressor. Right down here. I got a box of parts. Make 
sure that's correct before we get all hot wild here. Yeah, that is right. I guess we can click that in. Put the thing that's relaxed I've got this piece here. Put a zip tie in our bolt there so we wouldn't lose that. That was smart thinking. Okay. Across the back, line her up with the intake. Right. Get her all torqued down here to factory specs. And it doesn't matter, is the next question. Get over here, grab my wrench. There's no reason we can't. Put this all back together here. Get that up on there. Our steering be a little easier to get to. Ah, shoot, I didn't get enough swing with the wrench here, so I'm gonna hook up another bite. Ah, I just can't get it. Usually you try to go on a smooth pulley, but I don't want to do it like backwards, so uh, we'll go like this. So yeah, always put it on a smooth pulley. Don't don't do it. Don't do what I do, people. That's completely wrong. And I'm like half a rib off. There we go. Jeez. All right. Good to go. Right. Well, I looked on uh, Mitchell. I looked on the OEM data. So uh, both absolutely worthless because neither one of them specified what it takes. So I've got a, a couple O-ring kits here, so we'll look and see if I can find some O-rings that are going to fit that properly. I don't really, I don't really know. I can only assume because the guy did a really good job for us taking everything apart and labeling everything. Or look at that, dude! How did I nail it on the first try? I can only assume it had O-rings. And I also looked in the OE data to find out about uh, compressor oil capacity, blah, blah, blah. It gives capacity on everything if you change a condenser, accumulator, evaporator, line. It tells you how much oil to put back in it. It tells you when you remove the compressor to reinstall the amount of oil removed, which is our typical MO. Uh, but being that we don't know, and everybody hang on, because this is where everybody's going to go bananas. I'm not putting an accumulator on it. <laughs> All right. I'll wait for you guys to get back up out of your chair. And here's why. We don't even know if this system works, and nobody knows. So I'm not going to put a pile of money into it to find out that, you know, the condenser is bad or whatever. Um, and also, it is my experience with these trucks. When I do these... Just like I've done in another video, you take the condenser off, now you're pulling the dash, or not the condenser, the accumulator, receiver dryer, accumulator on this one. Um, <clears throat> you pull that off, you're putting an evaporator in it because it breaks the end of the evaporator. So, with that being said, given the age and condition of the truck, it'll be perfectly fine. Everybody just calm down. Just, whoa, calm down. There, now we got that out of the way. We'll continue on. Just had some people unsubscribe. All right, so we'll take that off. Set them little guys on here. Yeah, they feel like they're gonna be right. Let me get uh, 
Got a Q-tip here. We'll get some of our oil that we drained out. That should still be nice and clean. Everything. Got a little bit of oil here. <clears throat> Lube up our O-rings. Give her a little spritz right there. Where do they got to run first? Are they on top? Yeah, we'll assume they're up top. Oh, that feels good. I think. Does that feel good or doesn't it? I can't tell if it feels good or not. Because we've got, what have we got here? We've got that piece there. me like this hose bottoms out so do they want you to use the two flat washers is that the story it's always something so here we are now this close that close I mean that's close and we've got about we've got this little tiny gap under here on the discharge side of the compressor okay at first I thought it was bottoming out on this little, you know, boss that sticks up off here. But indeed, it's the overall length of the hose in relationship to the depth of the hole in the compressor. I got all excited. I looked to see that I had chaffered holes. Good. Depth of hole, no good. Um, you know, the O-ring goes in, you know, plenty past the chamfer. That's all good. The little gap that's left right here in the compressor, super small but it's just a smidge bigger than the ceiling washer. I have other ceiling washers that are a little bit thicker. We can stick it in there and everybody's gonna be happy. However, uh, I want to call, let's see if we can get a hold of the manufacturer of this compressor to find out, you know, is this, is this defect? Is there, uh, is there an updated discharge hose? I don't know about, that's what we need to find out. And before we just go and just, you know, stick a washer in there and tighten it down and move on with our lives. Let's see if we can get a hold of these folks. So this is the beautiful thing about the Napa website or the Napa Pro Link is that we can go on and get a phone number to any product that they carry. So we're going to look here. The Napa Temp including includes Napa Cold Power. 8 to 5 Central Monday through Friday. There it is. Let's give these young fellas a call. We'll get the number. This is this is the one we used. Man, I hope it's right. Jeez, it's gonna suck to have that tool back. Call this lady like, yeah, you're gonna have to wait another day or two. It's been like a week already. We got our number, we got the old compressor number. She's still on the phone. As soon as she gets off the phone, we'll gather some info here. In the meantime, I'll look and see if there is any kind of update on the discharge hose and uh, make sure they don't have something published on their on their site stating you know when you buy this compressor you gotta buy you know 30 other hoses uh, we'll see okay here we go oh, i've got stuff in my mustache call may be recorded for quality or training purposes thank you for calling smp temperature control technical hotline if you have a priority customer PIN number, please enter it now. Oh, please listen those. carefully to the following options. If your call is for catalog lookup and application questions, please press 1. If your call is regarding technical diagnostics and installation questions, please press 2. Good thing we didn't if jump the gun. Hey, this is Eric at self Main Auto. I've got a, working on a 2002 Dodge Ram with a 5.9 in it. And I bought a Napa compressor for it, and I'm having a little bit of problems hooking the hoses up to it. I'm wondering if you can give me some insight. Yeah, let me look it up. Yeah. Sure. Uh, 
275-612. Okay, that is the number that I actually have, 275-612. That's, that's the one they sent me. Uh -huh. And uh, that one there does not, uh, like I say, the hoses, um, you know, appear too long on the discharge side. So it, 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 yeah. So you're saying you have an issue on one of the ports, I believe that's what you talked earlier. Yep, yep, that's right. Yep, okay. yeah, the suction okay. side is fine, the discharge side just seems to be, it's not machine deep enough. You know, maybe I'm lacking like a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, but other than that, is everything is, uh, is is correct, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I believe you big you you giving me a forty eight thirty five. Yeah, that, that, that was an, yeah that was the number I gave you off the compressor. Okay. By any chance that you see like a five five o oh, five uh, Chrysler number anywhere in the compressor? Yeah, yeah, I've got the Chrysler number if you want that too. Sure. Yeah, it's five five zero five. 6076 AA like alpha alpha So we got to have the right one. Yeah, that's that's kind of bizarre because uh, you measure the factory one here, and the hole depth is substantially different. You know, I mean, it's almost a, it's almost a quarter inch different overall. Okay. Yeah, that is the number that crosses to it. Um, I don't know the compressor, or is, you, you still feel a little bit of movement in there? Oh no, no, it, it definitely bottoms. It hits the bottom of the compressor and uh, leaves me with about a sixteenth of an inch gap at the top. So yeah, the yeah, the the hose definitely bottoms. It doesn't. Uh, okay. You know, it the, doesn't quite. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. correct. Uh, I just wonder if I put in a seal. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was wondering if I can just use a seal, you know, a gasket, you know, a flat gasket seal, and the O-ring that's on the hose, if you know, if that if that would be acceptable. Um, about the, if you want to do that one, sir, uh, I tell you what, uh, see it'll hold your vacuum before you charge the system. Oh, absolutely, yeah, naturally I would. Yeah, um, yeah. The O-ring goes down into the, uh, down into the compressor far enough, you know, it's not like it's going to be sitting up on the edge of the chamfer or, uh, you okay. know, you know, I don't suspect it'll leak, but I just wanted to make sure if they had the correct compressor that I, you know, I would rather go that yeah. route, obviously, but. Yeah, try that if you don't mind, sir. My name is Al, and uh, if you're still getting any vacuum leaks on that, and there's no holding, sure. please give me a call back. Uh, it's two of us today, and uh, when you're trying that, I'll see if, if I can find you a, a deeper pore compressor. It's oh. not very common, but I, I, I'll look into my parts bin and, and see if I can come up with something for you. All right, Al. Okay, sir. Sounds good. So, yeah, try that. If that doesn't work, please. Please give me a call back. Absolutely. All right, sir. All right, very good. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Bye-bye. Well, I just spoke to Al at Napa Temp. Nice guy. Pretty helpful. <clears throat> he did some looking. As you probably heard, I don't know how much of the conversation I recorded. And, you know, we crossed the OEM numbers. He looked diligently to see if we could find what we need, but... Evidently, whoever makes these just isn't hogging out the hole deep enough. So, Al and I have determined that it is safe to put on an over, or a uh, flat washer, you know, with a ceiling surface on it to make up the difference there, put a vacuum on it, see if it holds. If it does, we're good to go. So, let's do that. I should have just done that because that's what I wanted to do, but at least we got it right from the horse's mouth. We got it from Big Al. He says to call him back if it doesn't work and he'll do some digging, but I think we'll be okay. So the washers that they sent with it <clears throat> are
are just, I think, a smidge on the too small side. <clears throat> so I've got these other washers. I've got a whole, whole kit of AC washers, ceiling washers. I think this big old jabroni is definitely thicker. Yeah, it's definitely thicker than our gap. <clears throat> Ooh, had a little suction in it. Hear that? So what I want to do, I'm going to take our, well, of course, we're going to have to put a, a washer on both sides now. See if we can get our O-rings back off there without any big damage. Peel our O-rings off. Oh, is that going to fit? Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, nuts. Pop the rubber out of the middle of it. Get that stuck back in there. They got teeth in them, they disengage. We're not really looking for this to seal, anyways, but we're just going for the overall thickness, I guess. Well, I cannot see. <clears throat> These are the thickness washers that we need, but they only fit well if we take the rubber o-ring out of the center. And I guess that really doesn't matter because we're still sealing on the actual o-rings on the line. So why why sit there and fight with that? So we'll just use these two these two washers that will fit on there just slightly. are still gonna lube here. <clears throat> Bring them back up and over. Alright, look at that. I think we're on to something now. Let me get the bolt that goes in the middle of that. <clears throat> over here on the old compressor. It makes me wonder if I ordered the uh, you know, the actual Napa line. I see Napa makes a, a you know, suction and discharge line for this. And I just looked at the picture of it and I see that has flat washers on both sides. So it makes me wonder if they've changed the depth of the, of the hose, you know, that, that sticks out. So that's kind of what I'm wondering. They don't have one in stock, otherwise I'd have them set it up just for the sake of seeing, but I think what we're doing is going to be perfect, to be honest with you. <clears throat> Grab a wrench here. That's good and tight. Big Al approved. And you know what? You big dummy. <laughs> Fool. Those lines do go underneath that. Oh, why didn't somebody say something? I thought they would have went above it. What do I know? I didn't take it apart. So don't hate on me. Don't be hating. I gotta do this. I'm gonna wear out our O rings here. Go. Do this again. Sheesh. I'll we'll put our say we got a throttle cable here and cruise control or something. Get that push back in. Alright. <clears throat> I'll tighten it up for the second time. Throw a little vacuum on this beast. All right, now I got that torqued. See, change the AC compressor. Piece of cake. Just in case you're concerned, because I know some of you are, that is what our washers look like underneath those hoses. I don't see any issue that can be caused by that. Well, we just put a vacuum on it. Uh, let's see where we're at here. 
still at uh, about minus 30 and that has been holding for about 20 minutes now and we can see it just it run through its own little I think it tests for 10 minutes but I actually had to walk away so got a good vacuum on the system I'm going to inject uh, just a couple ounces of oil not, not knowing how much <clears throat> was, was taken out when he unhooked the hoses if any I don't think we're gonna I don't think we're gonna cause any problems here Ounce or so in there, a little bit of dye. <clears throat> we'll throw a charge on it. There's no uh, label under the hood, so I looked it up. It says it takes 26 ounces. So we'll blow 26 ounces through the high side. Already put oil in it. Fire up until it works. We got a full charge on it, one pound, 10 ounces. I think the best thing to do, I grabbed our little leak tester here. We'll see if we have any leaks around this thing. <clears throat> well, I didn't suspect we were gonna have any problems, but Better safe than sorry. All right, here comes the big moment of truth. <coughs> Fire this hot rod up. Turn the AC on. In the middle of January, you can't ask for much better than a 32 degree AC system. Looks like our condenser fan's working fine. Looks like the clutch is working fine. That's it. We got it done. It's blowing cold. It's now going to defog the windows, which uses their defroster. And that's the main reason we fix AC systems in the dead of winter up here in New York is because when that baby quits, now you got to drive around with your windows cracked just to keep the fog out from inside a car because they're usually always wet, you know, just with the, getting in and out with your wet boots and, and uh, wet shoes and your clothes are wet and they're always wet because it's always snowing and crappy outside. And you get in and you try to use your defroster and it will defrost, but it will not defog without a proper, properly working AC system. So in case many of you are questioning as to why we didn't do that. And the other thing is you're just gonna have to settle down about the accumulator. Yes, I know everything you read says anytime the system's open. Well, you know what? That just is gonna turn into an absolute disaster on this thing. The truck's old, it's rusty, it's crusty. If I touch that accumulator, we're gonna end up buying an evaporator. And to put an evaporator in, you need about seven hours of spare time. You gotta take and pull the dash out. If you've never seen that procedure, I've done that and I've got it on video. And I'll put a couple links in the description below so you guys can see that and see how the blend door systems and HVAC systems on these trucks work on the inside. It's kind of an interesting video. I've done lots and lots and lots of these, uh, you know, heater cores and blend door actuators and all that stuff on this series truck because when they build them, they really skimped out when they built those. So back in the day, we did piles of them. And uh, you know, when they started making this body style here in 02 or, yeah, I think yeah, it was 02, 03, whatever, whatever it was, man, them things would break faster and you could change them. And boy, when they, be, when they got to where they're out of warranty, you 
learned how to do them pretty efficiently, let me tell you. And uh, it is something that kind of sticks with you. So, with that being said, I've been down that road before where you try to unhook them suckers and nope. So, we'll leave it alone. I assume the system was completely sealed up up until the day the compressor died. And I'll be honest with you, the fellow that tore it apart did a really good job uh, having it sealed up. As you've seen, when we took those uh, little rubber you know, things he had on there off. I mean, there was still pressure in the system or vacuum just from the heat exchange of letting the engine warm up before I brought it in. So I'm going with it. I think it's gonna be just fine. And I'm not too worried about it if you're not. I know some of you are. So <laughs> anyways, uh, check us out on Facebook and Google Plus. Just ask you to subscribe to our channel. If you haven't done that yet, if you wanna stay up to date with all the material we try to roll out each and every week, depending on our workload here at the shop, and as long as we got time, we like to kind of do that and have the interaction with you guys. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.